Hey guys, Sandy here, and I am doing a layout with my Citrus Twist kit from July, and I've also pulled some other things from my stash. I'm going to be scrapbooking this photo of my son. It was his first day of work for his very first job. So for the Citrus Twist part, I still have this one full sheet of paper. I thought I was going to be using this side because I really think this is pretty but I'm going to use this side with this picture. <laughs> all right, I've got this bit of fabric. Um, I tried something with just a little bit and it did not work at all. So um, I have this, I also have these four enamel dots left. I have this grid paper, which is on the back of this. I also have this sheet of paper, which has map print on the back. I have my thickers and then I have my die cuts and such things that are in there. I've also pulled out these um, adhesive metal ring tags, this Hello Forever sticker sheet that has been hanging around forever, um, this Amy Tangerine thickers pack, this Tim Holtz Ideology. Um, I think I'm going to cut out this one and use that for first job. And I also have Family & Co. from Fancy Pants, and I think I'm going to use some of the black and some of this, um, I don't know what to call it, like burnt burnt mustardy color. It matches this color and the fancy pants paper. All right, let's see what I can do. All right, so I'm starting out just like I start out most of my layouts, and that is cutting some rectangles out of paper and inking my edges. I had a comment um, a couple days ago that um, someone liked that I was still inking edges. Um, seems like a lot of scrapbookers aren't doing that anymore. Um, I'm wondering if that's like a time thing. Um, I know sometimes when I want to barrel through a bunch of layouts, I don't ink edges or I don't um, put on anything that's wet. So no spatter, <laughs> spatter, no splatters, uh, no paint, no ink, anything like that. Anything that has to have time to dry, I just just ignore it. All right, so with this photo, um, since it's a single photo, one of the things I like to do is use that L shape uh, where you have vertical and horizontal elements and you nestle the photo right in the corner. And that is probably one of my go-to designs when I'm using a one photo uh, on my scrapbook layout um, because it just gives it gives a good balance and I can maneuver the photo to whatever uh, portion of the page I want um, whichever quadrant or corner I want um, that if I'm noticing that a lot of my pages and my albums are going to be on like the bottom right hand corner I can just do a page where or a couple pages where my photo is actually going to be on the left or the upper left. Um, I went ahead and cut off the bottom edge of that uh, fabric piece, but I knew that I wanted to journal um, right next to the photo, so I knew I was going to have to um, cover up a lot of that fabric. And I actually like that, um, that edge, that unfinished edge up there with the reddish um, thread at the top. I like the look of that. And I thought it was appropriate because my son's first job was at a car wash. So it kind of reminded me of a little bit of a rag. Now, I had gone to my uh, stash of 6x6 six six paper and had found this uh, black and white uh, diamond print paper. You, it's very faint in the video, but it mimicked the diamond on the background and also those uh, diamond shapes um, on that horizontal element. So I thought that um, design-wise it was a good choice because of the color and it was also a good choice because of the other um, elements of the page. Now I realized that where I wanted that um, title to go, it was going to be cutting across um, the diamond, the two types of diamond paper and that just didn't, eh, it didn't, didn't didn't like it. Let's just put it that way. And what I decided to do was add another horizontal uh, layer, another long rectangle, so that my title could fit right on there. And um, 
so what I did, I just positioned the word dream, and then I went ahead and got some mini uh, letter stickers that I've had for a while. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where I got them or even like what brand they are, and that's me hitting the camera. <laughs> Uh, but I did get them, and don't worry, I'm actually cutting out a bunch of uh, time on this video, so you don't have to actually watch me uh, layer or place every single one of those tile stickers. Now, these are those adhesive tags that I had, and I knew that I wanted um, them to be on the page because I was going to use the number one from that Tim Holtz pack, and I thought... Um, you know what, I've had these for a long time, I mean a long time, and I have two full sheets of them. So I thought I would use them kind of like a border sticker. So I just, um, I cheated. I added some foam underneath of my photo so my photo could go over top of it. And I mean, I want to use up my stuff, but I don't want to waste it. And putting all of those little circle tags underneath the photo would have completely been a waste. Like nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to know that it doesn't go all the way down. Um, unless somebody's really getting into my albums and taking them out and like looking and to see how they're constructed. But honestly, if you want to get that weird about my albums, you're probably not even going to be in my house. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of just the way it is. So I, I like this, and I think that that turned out pretty cool. And I think that there's so much weight on the horizontal that I definitely need to put some weight on the vertical. Uh, but first, I'm going to mess around with these stickers. And I wanted that sticker, the What a Wonderful Day sticker. I knew I wanted that on um, the page because it was the first day of his first job. So, of course, it was exciting. Well, I decided to kind of play with that whole day theme and added this days of the week sticker um, underneath of the photo and the title and it's just like it doesn't really it doesn't make perfect sense <laughs> but it makes enough sense to me that it works on the layout and really that's all that you need to do is make sure that it makes enough sense for you now fun fact these little Tim Holtz um, ideology um, numbers fit perfectly over top of the Creative Memories Punch. Now, it might have been a little bit fast, but does anybody else's Creative Memories Punches stick? Like, they punch perfectly, but it's like the die part that shoots through kind of gets stuck, and I have to push it back down. Um, so I don't know. I don't even know if anybody still has creative memories punches, um, but I got to say they've been my favorite circle punches for a long time. Um, I have the square punches as well, but honestly, I hardly ever use them because it's not that hard to cut a square out of paper. I mean, it's pretty, pretty dang hard to get that perfect circle, but for a square, I'm quicker, quicker with my trimmer than I am to pull out the punch and, and position it and punch it. So anyway so I have these little uh, pliers um, chompers and I'm just chomping off the little nubbies on that plastic because uh, you know I don't want them and I'm going to use these arrows and I'm bringing in a little bit more black onto the layout I did map my photo on black um, the metal rings are black the titles black so I just want to make sure that I'm spreading the black around the page because everything else is kind of light and bright and I just don't want like all the heaviness of the darker color to be in one place. So I'm kind of just mixing it around. And I thought I was actually going to be able to use all of those stickers off that Studio Calico, Calico sticker sheet. It hasn't happened. Still have a couple more, but I swear I am going to get through them. That sticker sheet Every time I flip through my, um, like my stickers and stuff, I see that sticker sheet and it's like, use me, just use me. So that awesome day sticker is giving me a fit. Like, it, I don't even think it ends up there. I think it ends up on the bottom. But I do get one more sticker off of that sticker sheet, and that's going to be that long, um, 
border sticker that's up there. However, it's not going to be long enough, so I do that. Uh, another sneaky little trick <laughs> where I cut the sticker uh, portion in two and tuck it underneath of the photo. Now, I went and grabbed this blue uh, because I needed something that was close to that blue fabric. And honestly, it's not, it's not exactly that blue, but it's close enough. Um, I didn't have blue paper that was exactly that blue color, so this was close enough. I was good with it. I went ahead and used that scalloped border punch from EK Success, and I'm just going to tuck that underneath of the photo as well. Um, just because, like I said, I wanted some more weight on that vertical side of the paper um, because I felt like the horizontal side was pretty weighted. Like, like that was a great baseline for everything to sit on, but I needed a little bit more oomph in that vertical section. And what I did was um, trim that border sticker and overlapped it over the grid paper and the scalloped um, blue paper. And on the end of that little um, border sticker that I just did has the same colors, that orange and blue and, and almost black that that frame sticker has up at the top. And I put that down at the bottom so that those colors would not just be in one place. They wouldn't just be up at the top of the page. Like I wanted to make sure that those colors were going to be in at least two pages, two places on the page instead of just one like honking section up there. It wasn't um, exactly a design decision. <laughs> well, I guess technically it was. It was more of, I want to spread this look around the page so it actually looks like it belongs and not just I slap some stickers down on the page. All right, and then that wonderful day sticker finally um, has a place to go. And then I look and realize that that banner that I had wanted to use that was definitely um, had to be used on this page because it matched that um, burnt mustardy color on that pattern paper so well. So I threw that down there and was happy with it and then went ahead and grabbed another one of the chipboard pieces and put it up at the top. And I really liked I, there's that stupid awesome day sticker again and I'm messing around with it and my favorite place was definitely under the title but I wanted to put that banner on there. So this would have to be the second place position and that is over on that left hand corner. Now I decided to pull out these Amy Tangerine uh, kind of like starburst kind of asterisk -y type thickers and um, I'm actually going to ink over those with my Distress Ink and all it's going to do is take that stark white edge off of it and it's going to make it just a little bit gray and I'm okay with that. Like gray is just a doll black so I'm okay. I was toying with the idea of doing it in the blue just to bring that blue uh, throughout the page just a little bit more um, because it does go from the top to the bottom of the page but I was like, no, the, I don't have a blue that's exactly either one of those blue colors. So it was going to be a third version of the blue. And honestly, I can deal with two versions of it, but three was, would just be pushing it. Like, that's not going to work for me. So there I am just, you know, adding that little bit on. And I play with the idea of moving that arrow um, up at the top and putting the thicker one the thicker arrow at the bottom, and I decide not to. I just decide to move over that skinny arrow. Um, it fits perfectly right in that little rectangle of paper, like it's nestled perfectly in there. And I just knew that I was going to um, have enough to say in my journaling that I would fill up that entire piece of paper. And I'm just using up the little bit of enamel dots. And honestly, I think these enamel dots are brown. They're pretty dark, but I'm almost positive they're brown. But when you're looking at this page, it doesn't read as brown. It just reads as black. And I think that's because there's so many like varying shades of black. Like the dream and the letter stickers are different from 
each other, and they're also different from the plastic Tim Holtz black pieces, which is also different from the black cardstock, and it's also different from the black around the tags. So it's just like a bunch of different um, shades of black, but it works. And then I'm going to add one more when I add in my Distress ink marker to do the journaling and my head was just about over that entire shot so I completely cut that out for you guys. All right that's it thanks so much for watching and uh, check out um, the next Citrus Twist video. Bye!